Different types of bacteria, viruses, and other pathogens live on your farm. You might think it's clean and tidy, but they're still lurking. Bacteria are microscopic organisms that can multiply inside or outside of a host. Some are good, even essential, and others are very bad. E. coli grows in the guts of humans and animals and can be found virtually anywhere, like in water, but the bad strains of E. coli can be super dangerous. Like E. coli, Salmonella can be hiding lots of places. Viruses, on the other hand, can only multiply inside a host. Take norovirus, for example. You might just call it a stomach bug. You might have heard that it loves cruises, but it also loves hitching a ride on your food. These pathogens can make you really sick. Basically, they're germs you want to avoid. That's why Congress passed the Food Safety Modernization Act, or we call it FSMA for short. The FDA worked with scientists and farmers to create guidelines to keep our food safe. The produce safety rule is the part that farmers need to follow. Learning more about FSMA will protect your business, your produce, and your community. We were one of the first CSAs, Community Supported Agriculture Farms in the country. We're part of a land trust, so um, we've combined conservation, land preservation with community farming. We serve the public good. That means that we should be really aware of issues involving health. When we learned about the rule, it turned out that we already had a lot of systems in place that made us compliant with FSMA. We have a post-harvest handling set up where we are washing vegetables coming out of the field, and we are washing eggs in an entirely separate area so that there's no risk of contamination. Many of the harmful aspects that we encounter, like salmonella, can't be seen with the naked eye. When we learned that contamination could occur from boots coming out of the chicken coop and into our shop area. We incorporated the boot change to make sure that there's no risk of contaminating with any sort of bacteria and to make sure that the eggs and other products that we're providing to our customers are totally safe. Deep within uh, anyone who farms is that individual who loves to ride out to the back field all on their own and just be one with the plants not have to really consider what the next rule and regulation is right but you know as the new day dawns um, there are other things to consider we're educating young people to get them out there so they can be involved in this kind of agriculture as well. How you farm and uh, taking into account rules and regulations and, and food safety issues are extremely important to making a living at it. Rock City Farm is an 11 acre vegetable and flower farm. We're only three years old, so we're babies in the world of farming. We are really interested in farming through a social justice lens. We work with people in more marginalized communities in New York City, people who are suffering from HIV, who are also obese, who have diabetes. We think it's really important not to make them sicker. Our purpose as farmers is to have great options for them so that they can improve their health. If something were to go wrong on our end, and all of a sudden those people were sick, all that you've worked for could disappear in a second. One of the barriers for me originally with FSMA was the financial burden potentially that was gonna have to happen to us to be in compliance. I went to a FSMA training earlier this year. It was a day-long training. That binder is really thick. They went over all of the sections of the, the manual, and it was really enlightening. The agent that we were working with said that there might be a possibility we would have to do water testing. And I started thinking about all the different levels and different types of irrigation we have. And I just imagined myself doing water testing and with every moment risking that it could shut down your farm because it just takes one test that might cause us to be shut down. If somehow 
an animal got in our water source and we had no idea, somehow have E. coli on something that could impact the livelihood of our business and our ability to do it, our, our job, that's scary because we can't control everything. As scary as it might be to test your water and know that you're gonna risk finding out if you have something in it or not, it's still better that we test it and find that out and are able to address it than for it to go unsolved. It's our duty as farmers to really get to know our water and um, know, you know what's going out to our customers. So after we tested our water, we re revealed that there's no E. coli in it, which is great. Hallelujah. It feels really good that their irrigation source is, is healthy, right? So that's just taking off the added stress that we already experience as farmers. I think we can do a little bit each year and do a little bit in each season to put us ahead. The farm was actually started by my dad, my uncles, back in the 40s. So I grew up on the farm. I went away to college. I came back to work on the farm, and then the rest was history. Food safety, although it wasn't talked about many years ago, um, was always a concern for us. A lot of the regulations that are in place now, whether the Worker Protection or the FISMA Food Safety Modernization Act, it is making farming more challenging for all growers, especially family-sized farm operations like ourselves. We are in the category of having to abide by all the regulations. The new regulations are going to be more work, but they will make food safer. We prioritized a lot of the FISMA regulations very early this spring, and we got a lot of our standard operating procedures in place as soon as possible. That way, now that we're busy and rolling and out in the fields planting, um, we have everything that we need so that we can flow easy and smooth for the season. Most of the concepts are things that we already think about. Hand washing, personal hygiene, what type of amendments we're adding to the soil and over the tops of the crop. The training is, is important. Uh, to bring growers like ourselves up to steam on the specifics um, and the requirements of the FISMA regulations. If we're not growing safe food, then we shouldn't be growing it at all. After the FISMA training, we came back and installed a hand wash sink in the wash station. We've also made a big push to place organizational signs that are easy for our employees to read at each station. In order to lower the risk of contamination after you use the bathroom, it's very important to wash your hands. After you use the restroom, you should wet your hands and use soap and then wash thoroughly for 20 seconds and then rinse your hands again. Use a paper product to dry them and then throw away the paper towel. We have trash cans with lids at all our facilities, and we constantly stock soap and paper towel products at all of them as well. For any size farm, um, the way to get started is just take one step at a time. Focus on the most important aspects of the food safety regulations. So if it was as simple as hand washing, do that first as a simple first step, and then you can go from there. My long-term goal would be to uh, have the farm continue to the next generation and be able to operate successfully with good, safe food production practices. I'm pleased with the changes that we've made, and I think it makes for a healthier and better work environment, as well as a safer food production. Following FDA's guidelines can protect your business and your customers' health. Learn more about the produce safety rule and how it applies to your farm by visiting a FISMA training near you.